Hello! Earlier on Tuesday, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson appeared before a U.S. Senate Appropriations Subcommittee to discuss NASA's budget request for the upcoming year. He was asked what he thought was the biggest threat to NASA's goal of landing humans on the moon by 2025, and then, quite unexpectedly, he responded that the agency needs competition in its program to develop a human landing system that is, competition for SpaceX's Starship, with the goal to get at least a second company to develop their own lunar lander, which could either be Blue Origin or Dianetics, or any other that comes up with a uh, decent proposal. However, what is even more surprising is what Nelson said afterward. Listen to this. I believe that uh, that is the plan that can bring us all the value of competition. You get it done with that competitive spirit, you get it done cheaper, and that allows us to move away from what has been a plague on us in the past, which is a cost plus contract and move to a, a uh, an existing uh, contractual price. That's right. He also asked Congress to fund this second lunar lander with a fixed price uh, contract. Uh, that is, the companies only get paid once they reach certain milestones. Uh, this is a stark contrast to what NASA has done traditionally, which is to award cost plus contracts that pay contractors all of the project's expenses plus a fee. And this is what was done with the Space Shuttle program and more recently with SLS. And uh, it's no secret what has happened with the development of the SLS rocket, it just recently and briefly arrived at the launch site for the first time ever after being almost six years late, only to uncover more problems and head back to the assembly building, which will probably add more costs on top of the already $20 billion that the program has registered in cost plus contracts. Uh, the Artemis 1 mission has definitely put NASA in a bit of an uncomfortable situation and after seeing what private companies can bring to the table for a fraction of the cost, it's understandable that they want to go down the path of fixed price contracts because they do work really well and can vastly improve the efficiency with which they spend their money. You all give us uh, an X amount of money and we've got to make that money happen the way that we're trying to achieve and we can leverage that money by working with the commercial industry and through competition bring those costs down to NASA. Give you one more example. The development of SpaceX and their very successful rocket, the Falcon 9 and the Falcon 9 Heavy. General Hyten, the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs, told me last year before he retired he said the fact that we have competition now on going to space just for the military has saved them $40 billion in launch costs. So it's just another example of the public-private partnership. For perspective, since last year, SpaceX has launched a total of five Crew Dragon human spaceflight missions, three of which carried NASA astronauts to the ISS aboard a rocket and capsule that cost around $1 billion to develop, of which NASA helped pay with around $400 million, uh, which is much less than the billions that the agency has to pour into the SLS program annually for a rocket that hasn't even flown yet. Still, Congress has to decide whether they want to go with a fixed price option or not, but at least it's a good thing that NASA wants to embrace this possibility and all the benefits that go along with it. I think this is a fantastic news for the agency, since fixed price contracts will allow them to spend their budget more effectively and productively, which will benefit the space industry by and large. So um, definitely a topic worth discussing. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, how you feel about this, uh, in the comments down below. Other than that, I will see you again soon with another video. Until then, take care. Bye bye.